Well, hello everyone and welcome to Fantabulous Speaks. As always, I'm Olivia Rose. So today we're going to talk about shampooing your hair and how to effectively and properly do that. This is actually going to be very important information for anyone who has naturally curly hair or you have relaxed hair or any type of processed hair. So let's begin. Now first we're going to obviously go through our tools. So of course you need shampoo. So the shampoo that I use is the Aveda Damage Remedy Restructuring Shampoo. Noticing a trend with my Aveda products? Also you're going to need a wide tooth comb. Now this is my wide tooth comb that I like to use. You want to make sure always that your wide tooth comb doesn't have any of the metal, not the metal, the plastic pieces sticking off from it and that it's nice and smooth all the way throughout. You can also use a shower comb. I do not use a shower comb because during my conditioning process I actually get out of the shower and I sit down and do my condition. Also you're going to need a shower head or a water source. Now some women like to use their head and go into the kitchen sink and you know flip your hair over and then wash it that way. That's not necessarily wrong but it wouldn't be the best especially if you're trying to not have tangles. Um, a lot of people don't realize also that when they're this way they're using too much of the shampoo on the hair and not necessarily on the scalp. One quick note to know is that shampoo is for the scalp and conditioner is for the hair. So you're going to want to concentrate shampoo on your scalp area, work up a good lather, and let that product slide down your hair shaft. But first, let's get to the important stuff, your shampoo. Now I know a lot of you are like, shampoos, I don't get it. Well the reason why is because of the ingredients that are inside of shampoos. Most of the shampoos that are manufactured are really manufactured for people who have loosely curled hair to straight hair. What happens is, is that people who have loosely curled hair to straight hair, they produce what's called sebum. We all produce sebum, but they produce it more readily and more often. Unlike people who have naturally curly hair, um, post shampoo, we need to actually add moisture to the hair or add moisture in the form of moisturizers, oil sheens, so on and so forth. So shampoos is actually shampoos are actually designed to rid the hair of this excess. What happens with naturally curly hair is that it rids it too much. It does too much of a good job. So it almost strips it bone dry. So the ingredient that does this are surfactants. So what you want to do is make sure that you don't have that in your shampoo. If you can, you want to refrain from using it. These are ammonium lauryl sulfate, ammonium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, and sodium lauryl sulfate. Now if you had to have a shampoo that actually had any of these harsh detergents um, inside of the shampoo, you want to go for the sodium lauryl sulfate. So that you know what this detergent or this surfactant is and how harsh it is. These are actually found in a lot of your dish detergents, your laundry detergents, and actually even some cleaning products. So imagine how harsh that can be. And if you're not producing oils so readily and so often, you're stripping your hair of moisture. This is also the reason why you do not wash your hair as often. You want to wash your hair um, every five days. Not really too much before because you don't want to strip your hair of this moisture. This is also why you want to concentrate the product on your scalp and not on the hair shaft. Once again, shampoo is for your scalp, conditioner is for your hair. So let's move on to step one. Now first you want to prepare your hair so that it can actually be shampooed. Now I know a lot of you are like, prepare the hair. All that means is detangling it as well as giving yourself a small short scalp massage to loosen up dirt and dead skin. So let's begin. Now this is where you can use your comb, but I generally try my best not to use a comb because I am ridiculous with the comb and I'm never as aware with the comb as I am when I'm with my fingers and I can have my fingers slide down and separate. But this is also the time where you would want to use your comb ladies if you feel like your fingers you just can't do it that way. And of course what you would want to do when you have your comb is you want to work your way from the bottom and then go up to the root. Don't work from the root to 
to the bottom because you might pull out excess hair that you don't need to. So what I'm doing is a combination of two moves. I am actually doing somewhat of a scalp massage to loosen up the dead skin and the dirt as well as a detangle. I'm going in, I'm doing a little bit of, you know, blood circulation, stimulation at the top, and then I'm moving my fingers down to the tips and then finishing it off. Some people actually use the four um, crowned method. That means they separate their hair into four pieces and then comb each part. Because I have a relaxer and my hair is not that thick, I really don't have to do that. But um, if you feel like you need to do that, it's a very good tool to detangling your hair, especially if you have a lot of thick hair. My hair isn't that thick, so uh, yeah, this will suffice. So as you can see, also I wanted you guys to notice my fingers as well. All of my fingers before I started to touch my hair at all have been filed down and they've been smoothed out and buffed over. The reason for that is because you don't want any extra like hangnails or tag nails to tear out your hair. I've said this so many times and it is so very important. So now let's move on to step two. As you're checking for the water temperature, make sure that the water is warm and not hot as hot water causes damage to the hair shaft and the ugly frizzies. So next you want to make sure that your hair is thoroughly saturated. This allows for the shampoo to work easily into your hair. Make sure that you do this for about a minute or until you feel like your hair is thoroughly saturated with water. Always put the shampoo in your hands first. Do not put it directly on the hair as you can't see the amount you're putting into your hair. Make sure that you can work up your lather in your hands before applying to the hair. This helps you get your desired lather without using too much product. You shouldn't use more than a quarter size amount, but I like to use the dime two time method. That just means a dime size amount of product used twice. Also, make sure to apply throughout the scalp and use those fingertips, not your nails. As you can see, I'm about to go back in and do my second round with my dime sized amount. I'm working the lather in my hands and I'm going to apply to the head. Make sure again that you are concentrating that product only on the scalp as the product will slide down the hair shaft once it's time to rinse. You want to rinse your hair thoroughly with warm water. Basically, you want to rinse your hair until water can run through it with no bubbles. This is important for getting clean hair as not rinsing it properly may leave a greasy foam. However, do not rinse your hair until it squeaks or until it gets that squeaky clean as you're actually rinsing out the natural oils, which are crucial to healthy hair. If you've washed your hair weekly or at least once every five days and you haven't overloaded on products, one shampoo application should be enough. So blot dry and proceed on to your condition. Honey Bunches, don't forget to show your love. Rate, comment, and subscribe.